Hey gang, this is a real short video about a problem that I've had. Um, pretty bog standard Cisco 3600 series wireless AP. You'll see them all over the place, commonly used to provide internet or Wi-Fi, uh, wherever you go. Um, they're normally configured through their ethernet, but sometimes you need to configure them through their serial port. So, on the back here, it's a really common Cisco console cable. Um, this is a really common industry standard thing. Uh, it's on pretty much every Cisco device ever made, plus a whole bunch of other vendors. And it's RS-232 on an RJ45 port. Really common, kind of hard to get wrong. But, no laptops these days are coming with RS-232, so inevitably, we're always using these kind of doodads here. A USB RS-232 port. I'll give a shot of it there. So this is a cheapie. All of the electronics are inside the little DB9 head shell there. But, this one's really causing me trouble. So, plugged in, nothing funny going on. And, it's my, just focus that for you guys. Linux box, nothing happening, right? Annoying as hell. But, if I take the console out of this, plug it into a switch that's just lying around. thing works, you know, there, either way, I've got working serial, right, no question, so my serial's working, why the hell isn't working with this, and it gets even more weird, because if I plug in a different type of serial adapter, it works, so, you know, I know my cable's good. I know the adapter works. So, plug it back in. Nothing. If I swap to a different chipset based serial adapter. So, I got this one here. Get rid of that. And then it like when you come off, just reconnect. Look at that. So this is on the AP, right? Definitely on the AP. If I unplug it from the AP, it stops working. Plug it in. She works. So, the best thing I can think to do is chuck it on an oscilloscope and see what's going on. Luckily, the DS1052 from home. Okay guys, so now we can monitor what's going on. Um, I've got this uh, DS1052, which is a really cheap oscilloscope, but I've had heaps of fun with it. It's been super useful. And I've got it set up to monitor the serial line. So I've got two channels going in, channel one and channel two. And you'll notice that there'll be a couple of lines. So I've just got it set to single shot capture. So I'll type a, a command in. Now this is to the good AP. Oops, screen's locked, hang on. So if I type a T, again if I type a T you'll see a couple of lines so the first one is the yellow trace so that is the transmit data going from my computer to the wireless AP and then immediately following that we've got this blue line and that is the receive data so when I type a T it uh, gets it to the AP and then the AP will display T on the screen so I know what I've typed and that's what you can see coming back. Also, I've got serial protocol decode on, so you can actually get the scope to tell me what the signal is going in and out, which is really handy. Now, I'm really confused as to why this works with some serial cables and not others. Um, I'm not sure whether it's a voltage thing or a signaling thing or what. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I've got some cursors running and they allow me to measure some voltages. So I wanna measure my voltage going from my computer to the access point and I can see here so I'll line that up with the top there 
that we've got a voltage of about 15.8 volts. Now the RS232 standard I think says between 3 and 15 volts, so that's pushing the limits of the RS232 standard. So this one is running the maximum voltage that RS232 allows, which is great. Uh, the next one we've got is the receive voltage. So for just interest's sake, we'll see what that one is. So you'll notice there that I've got them both set to 5 volts per division. So we'll chuck the cursor on the bottom there. And that one's just about there. So you can see I'm measuring the height of the blue one. And that one is coming back at 11.2 volts. All right, excellent. So I'll try doing the same thing with my known not working capture. And I'll set it with a single shot. So I've just pushed the single button and I'll type G in. Now you'll notice that nothing's come on. So I've got to adjust the trigger level. So there is the trigger. So obviously the voltage isn't high enough to trigger it. So I'll turn down the triggering a bit and type H. Hmm, even lower. That's weird. All right, got it to trigger. Now, just looking at that, it's really clear that that's very much lower, the voltage. So let's have a look at our cursor. So line that up with the top of that. Missed. And from the cheapo no-name brand, we can see here it's only giving out a voltage difference of 5.4 volts. Now, that doesn't seem to be enough to trigger these fancy schmancy Cisco OPs. But it's enough to trigger a switch. So that's quite interesting. Um, what works on one Cisco doesn't necessarily work on another. And voltage is important. Now, here's the setup I've got. I've got my probes, and they're just tapped into the wires. Now, the pinout for this RJ45 serial is really clever. Someone's put a lot of thought in. But, just to make sure it's not a weird signaling thing, I'm going to cut the non-essential wires. So for RS-232 you only really need two, uh, three wires. You're going to need transmit, receive and a signal ground. Now, with these it's actually fairly quick to learn the ones you need. In this case I'm going to need four wires because the center two are connected together. So the, I need red, orange, yellow, green and then I'll cut every other wire because I don't need it. Which means I'm cutting the blue wire. Don't cut the blue wire. Right. So right now I've disconnected all of the non absolutely essential wires in case it's like a an X on, X off versus a, you know hardware flow control signaling thing. Do I need that grey wire? I don't think so. I'm cutting it. No, I already cut the grey wire. It's a brown wire. I'm cutting the brown wire. <laughs> okay, so I've only got the absolutely essential wires connected. Uh, my two grounds because they're joined and TX and RX. So let's see if that changes the outcome at all. Okay, single shot capture again. Now 
That's interesting. This time I got something back from the device, but it was just garbage on the screen. I'll try it again. I'll give it a G. So you can see here that I'm sending it a G. Decoders a G. And we're only getting a little bit of noise on the way back, so I think that's fairly conclusively proved. It's not signaling, it's not flow control, it's just a case of some RS232 adapters have enough voltage and some don't.